Senior Director of Peer and Wellness Services at Cascadia Behavioral Healthcare. She is on the faculty of Portland State University where she trains peer wellness specialists. Um, I'd like you to welcome Megan Cahi and Ananda. Thank you. Hello. Um, I just want to piggyback on Dr. Serena's talk. I think she's left, but um, you know, some people have husbands, some people have wives, some women have children, and some of us have dogs. And, and one other thing, one other thing that people, she didn't even know this, but I, I informed her, when we pet our dogs, our oxytocin, oxytocin goes up, but also the dog's oxytocin oxytocin goes up. So just, kitties and kitties too. <laughs> probably ferrets, probably ferrets, but I don't know about the ferrets. Today we're gonna to be talking um, some about art and some other things. Guy Authory had asked me to focus on resilience and this morning, I mean, this has been a really hard couple days to be very frank with you. I was thinking how in the world am I gonna come and represent or talk about resilience. But I'm gonna do my best. Um, one thing I would like to, to uh, uh, alert you to is in the center of your table, there should be some uh, pin markers. So if everyone would take a couple of those, you know, just open them up and everybody take a couple picture, pieces, uh, colors that you like, and then there should be some paper. Uh, so everyone take a piece of paper. If for some reason you don't have enough paper at your table. If you would raise your hand and wave it vigorously, we will bring you a piece. So everybody get set up. Okay, so um, I think back there's, there might, there's need for paper in the back right. Back there, someone is waving. Okay, so um, I'm an artist and I'm going to tell you some about my story and I'm going to illustrate it through some of my um, artwork. But let me just tell you a little bit about how I came to be standing on this stage. Um, when I was 19, I was away at college for the first time. Actually, I was 18. And I was in an art history class and I started hearing voices telling me that I was bad and that I was uh, all these terrible things. And then I went out and walked across the campus and people's faces were distorted into, they looked like insects. And it didn't just stop after that. It went, started being my day-to-day -day experience. I ended up in the student health center for three days. And on the third day, they took me to see the psychiatrist. I had never seen a psychiatrist. I didn't even know what they did. And he leaned across his desk and he said, you have schizophrenia. And I didn't know what schizophrenia was, but I knew it was like a death sentence. That's all I knew. Anyway, so over the last um, 40 years or so, um, I've been dealing with this thing called schizophrenia. And I, you know, I started out as an art major, but I switched my, my major to psychology because I wanted to find out what it is and what my brain was doing. Um, but they say a picture is worth a thousand words, so I'm going to first show you some, some drawings. This is a drawing, a pen and ink and charcoal drawing. This is called Hugging Form. These first drawings I'm going to show you are fairly dark, but I think they show you some of what the experience is for some of us who have this diagnosis. This is Hugging Form. Um, this is called uh, crane, Pain Cry, and it's a we're talking about mothers and children. It's a child and the mother, probably a very postpartum mother. Um, I wish the doctor was still here. She'd probably understand this. Um, I have a friend who is a bereavement counselor and when she talks with parents who have lost their children to suicide, she shows them a picture of this picture and says, this is what it was like for them that they had to leave. So, um, this is another drawing. You see the, the human figures in there. Um, this figure uh, right here, there's a, the womb. Uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. This is 
um, a human figure. For me, the, the deer, uh, I, I had heard a story that when a deer shows up in the some of the Native American um, stories, that a deer is a good sign. So I put a deer in this drawing. This drawing, that's about how big it is. It's as big as the screen, practically. These are very big drawings. Um, I did a series of uh, pen and ink drawings called the human beings. This is just one of them. There are eight. This is all pen and ink. Uh, I did this when there was a lot of strife in Central America. And uh, this, is, th this is about motherhood, really, th about motherhood and war. But all these pictures, I think, show the pain and the, the feelings, the anxiety, the depression, the unhappiness, the great suffering that someone with a very severe psychiatric diagnosis has, which was me, is me. Uh, this is called Cry in the Empty Room. And actually, this is an award-winning um, picture. Um, and this, this says it. I mean, this, this, is, this is it. This is it for me. Um, again, I wish the doctor were here. This was when I was premenstrual. Can you relate? <laughs> this is called cadmium woman, but um, cadmium is a red pigment. And um, so cadmium, this is before uh, my menses began, and this is after it was over. So anyway, and this is uh, with a cadmium uh, streak rising. But you'll also notice that around, around the, uh, the red here, there's a flower figure. And that's kind of where this talk is going to go. Um, just for, but we have a few um, detours. Uh, this is called The Gift. Uh, this has been um, published. This is uh, in a private collection. Um, I had been very depressed. and. Um, Someone brought me some flowers when I was coming out of the depression, and I did a painting about it. And so uh, the figure with the black coming up, that is, that is me, and it was me with my flowers. Um, I play cello, and I have a dog. And so cellos and dogs I love. This is called Blue Cello, Yellow Dog, big surprise. Uh, this is kind of a hard to see slide. But for a long time, I was living in California, and I always thought that if I could get out and swim with the gray whales when they migrated back and forth, that that would be my salvation. Um, most of you know the story of Icarus, who uh, had the wax wings, that, and he flew too close to the sun, and then he fell into the sea when his wax wings uh, melted. But in my version of the story, he, he falls, or she falls into the sea, and then the, the whales all come and gather him up and her up and take care of her, and she's happy. Um, and there's another, you know, it just, this is a recurrent theme. Let me just throw in a few details um, about my story while I'm showing this art. During the time of making these paintings, I was going, and I still am going, I'm no longer going in and out of the hospital all the time, but I've been hospitalized over 100 times for schizophrenia. I've been in four-point restraints for um, once over 23 hours. Um, I've been in seclusion rooms, but the four-point restraints are something I'm so against. Uh, tons of medications with many uh, dire side effects that have even uh, resulted in um, uh, bodily, I, I won't even go into it. It's uh, just really severe, um, embarrassing some, and just life-changing side effects. But I did get into a clinical trial and did find a medication that was, uh, did not have bad side effects for me. And that led to a period of recovery that ended up, for the first time in my life, being able to start thinking that I wanted to work, wanted to have a job. I'd been on SSI for many, many years. And I went to my psychiatrist. I said, you know, I think I want to work. And he said, oh, you're too sick. And I thought, huh, right. <laughs> Here's more fish. Here's more fish. I built a koi pond with my hands, and I would have dreams about swimming with my koi. 
Oh, we saw that. Okay, now, there came a time in my life when I was committing, um, I was attempting suicide so often that the EMTs knew who I was. They would come to my house with the sheriff, knock down the door. Um, I would take all my pills and drink half a bottle of wine, and then they'd take me to the hospital. This was repeated many, many times. On one level, I knew that there was going to become a time when they weren't going to get there in time for me, and I was going to die. And it was just a matter of time. Um, I went out at the field on a late winter day, and I took stock of my life. And for some reason, you know, we have this thing called grace. I don't know if grace is luck, or is it love, or is it an inherent quality in living beings. But I looked deeply inside, and I found a spark of the life force. It was very quiet, it was very small, but I listened to it. As I listened to it, it became louder and louder, and I started to embrace it, and I made the decision that I was going to stop trying to kill myself. After that, doors started opening. I think sometimes when we make a major life change or decision, we start seeing the world differently. I started seeing the world differently. I started seeing opportunities. And that was when I got into the clinical trial for the medication that helped. I also started painting lotuses, going into the um, studio and painting lotuses. Now, the lotus is a metaphor. Um, I, some of you, um, I'm sure, are very aware of this metaphor. Um, a lotus is a beautiful flower, right? And it must have its roots deep in the mud in order to thrive and be a beautiful flower. That's just how it works. Mud, 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 ooze, you know, organic stuff, and then up comes this gorgeous, gorgeous blossom. So I started painting lotuses because I thought, this mud, this is my life. This is my pain. This is my suffering. This is my unhappiness, my trauma. And that is going to be what feeds my blossom. That is going to be what becomes my life. So I'm going to show you some different. This is a lotus lover um, with the fish up there, uh, another lotus. Yet another lotus. This is a red lotus. This talk was supposed to be called the message of the red lotus. Um, I chose the red lotus because red is a pigment that I like to work with. It's a, um, it's, it's a symbol of blood. It's a symbol of life. So I use that uh, a lot. This is ke a kebium lotus. This is actually a summer lotus. And um, I'm having a show in November at J. Pepin Gallery. And this is just a little plug for that show. Um, and this is a recent lotus uh, painting um, that will be in that show. Um, and suddenly my palette has gone from very subdued to very, very bright. Um, here's another recent lotus uh, painting. Um, lotus person with antlers and wings. And um, this is a really big uh, painting. Uh, this is a winged person with lotus. And this is one that I just finished last week. Um, I haven't given this one a name yet. But again, you see the lotuses. Um, is this a picture of my studio? I just thought, we're a bunch of women. We want to see what other people's houses look like, right? <laughs> um, and also, this is Asha. This is an Asha event. And Asha means hope. And there was a, there was a German artist named Gerhard Richter. And he says very wisely that art is the highest form of hope. And I know everyone has their own version of hope. But everyone also has their own version of art. So we can agree, I hope, that art is the highest version. Now, with your piece of paper, what you're going to do, this, if, you, if you'll do this, you don't have to, but you're going to make a lotus drawing. So take your paper and take you know, a couple of your pins. The first thing you're going to do is across the the center of the page where this line is, draw, draw a thick line just any place across the middle of the page. That's the top of the ground. That's the top of the ground. 
Has everybody done that? We're going to go really fast through this because this isn't something to think about. This is something to just do from your gut to do spontaneously. So here's the ground. Now, underneath that ground, this is your mud. Here's your mud. So in your own mud, identify, write the words or pictures or whatever is in your own life that makes up your mud. Everyone is going to have your own different version of mud. Um, you know, it's your unhappiness, it's whatever has happened to you, it's you know, what, you know, what hurts you in your life. That is your mud. And then you see here's some roots, and the roots are coming up. And then up here, hey, look, that's a lotus. A lotus has come up from the mud. And when you draw your lotus um, up in, in your picture, you know, draw whatever kind of flower you want, or whatever kind of anything you want, really. And the blossom is you. So you know, you are what you love, what you love to do, who you love, things that make you happy. Uh, things that you feel are your strengths, um, things that you are proud that you've done, uh, things that you give people, things that you've received of value from other people in your life, that is your lotus. So um, I just wanted to make, a, as you do this, um, just, you know, if you don't have time to finish this, I encourage you to take this home and really work on this and, ex and develop this because this has a, psych a profound psychological effect to me be making art and connecting these things with ourselves. Now, at the beginning, I told you I'm having, I've been having a really hard uh, couple of weeks, and um, sometimes I have been feeling sometimes like I really don't even want to be on the planet right now, um, and I am, and I'm committed to being here. But um, sometimes there is, there is very little hope. Sometimes it feels like there is no hope. And um, that's, I mean, I experienced that. I assume that everyone in this room has times when hope is in short supply. So when hope is in short supply, then we look for courage. This, this conference is called Grit and Grace. Our flower is our grace and our grit is our mud and so there we have it thank you very much